All right, so here we have it. Um, so right now, this is, uh, I've wired in most everything here. I've got a, just a long piece of copper wire that I had. Um, I've just, you know, been doing rewiring at the house. So just for, hey, I'll just get a big long piece of that scrap. So um, this is the presence control. And then the, this grounding bus comes all the way down and connects in here. And this is also my 200 ohm resistors connected in there uh, that come off of the heater wires. And then I have the input, it's ground comes into there. I will be obviously connecting in a wire into there to connect to the chip, the board once it comes in. But I have a switch here and here. This switch is going to be my, um, my basically my toggle between the different channels. And then this one right here on the actual um, plexi, um, what is it? I guess it's the bright channel. I'm just gonna do a bright switch there, even though technically I guess that's kind of in the wrong spot because this is the volume for the uh, plexi normal channel. Um, it, I guess I could in theory possibly swatch the vol swap the volumes, put the bright here so that that makes sense. But there was just an already a pre-made hole there. So I've got, you know, so I've got one switch here that will be for switching my relay and this switch, you know, so you can switch it manually on the front or you can use the foot switch, which I'll hook up back over on this side. And then we've got, you know, volume one, volume two and volume three. Um, I've got, and I've wired in what I can of those things that connected to things like grounds. And I also have a I, I did put an input that came, this just directly comes off of this input into that input or into that tube. So I just put that one in, for example, that shielded wire. Uh, this will be my master volume. I've got nothing hooked up there yet. And I've got my grounds and a couple of the connections. This is the tone stack. Now this is done a little weird. Normally you'd have the tone stack and then the master volume, but the way the spacing on these holes were is they're supposed to be kind of an input basically right here. Uh, and then it started in another section, but the also these pots are so big and the holes were so close together, they wouldn't they would hit each other. So I had to kind of space them fairly wide. So they're like all the way across the front of this thing. It's just kind of funny. But uh, so instead I've got the all of my volumes are on this side. So I've got uh, you know, like I mentioned a minute ago, I've got the plexi normal, plexi bright, and then I've got the JCM eight hundred, and then I have the master volume, and then I'll have treble, middle, bass, and then presence. So your kind of tone adjustments will be here, and all of your volume adjustments will be over here. Just it balanced out better with the way this front panel was already drilled. So, um, and uh, I think I was talking earlier. I I, I we'll try and zoom in now. We'll take a quick uh, shift to come over into here because I think I finally have this all fixed. We'll talk you through it again, and I'll show that on the schematic because even last video I actually had this wrong still. So let's go back and look at that. All right, so. Now, what I'll have, this is connected to the center tap of the output transformer. Uh, comes across also, this is just unity because we have a, a jumper between the two, connects over to this fuse that I now have been connected incorrectly. That fuse output comes in to the choke. The choke then output comes to the B node. So A is now wired correctly. The only thing that's gonna be missing is the actual B plus voltage. But I now have wired in a small, um, uh, terminal strip here just so it's easy to connect this to that and then I will connect to my um, board over to that guy as well and then I'll run a B plus from the board over and connect it into that guy then we will have all those done uh, so now this is all wired correctly I do have this also this is my screens so the screens voltages are coming across uh, and as mentioned hits the pin six jumps through this resistor to pin four where it actually happens to be needing to be hitting um, so I've got all that fixed now correctly so as that as I, this should be done correctly, basically I should have the output of this transformer coming to here. I will jumper that to the board through my rectification. My rectification will come back to here. And at this point we'll have rectified, uh, unfiltered B plus voltage of A, at the A node. And then these two both will send it, one will send that, rectif or that rectified filtered voltages to the screens or to the plates through a fuse, uh, off through the choke and then to the B where the screens are. B jumps to C, which I will connect a wire over the C connection. This jumps to D, which I'll connect over the D connection. And this jumps to E, which I'll connect to the E connection. And then that last connection is on the board, which is the F1. So, or, or I might've done E and F backwards. It doesn't matter. They're still just, you know, the connection points. So uh, I will be basically next working on, oh, this is just an extra piece I don't need in here, sorry. Uh, I will basically now be working next on getting the board finished so we can drop the board in and we kind of wire the rest of this up, but we're getting very close, so. Thanks everybody. All right, everybody. So today, I last weekend I spent some time. I'll be able to show you a little bit. I worked on the inside of the chassis, got some of my the rest of the stuff set up in there. But this week I've been, and I, I'm sorry I haven't released that as a video, so these you'll be seeing these back to back. But uh, so you've already just basically seen the previous part. But we're covering in on what I've done this next week as well. Um, so I've been populating the board with all the components I need. Um, one of the things you might not be able to see, but I've got some shielded wire 
And the shielding has a ground that comes over this ground as well, but the shielding comes over and jumpers to this side because I know there's a lot of busy components going on here. So I want this as my first input stage jumping to this side, and so I wanted it shielded, so it's got shielding across there. Um, but I've got all of the different uh, input stages. I haven't soldered any of these inner ones on purpose yet because that's where I'll be bringing these wires from the main body up in and through. Uh, I did decide, uh, I think I've mentioned this was going to be a bit tight, but I decided to kind of fold the leads underneath and then down into these holes to get them in there. It fits, it's very tight, but it should work. Uh, I've got my dropper resistor kind of hidden back here, and then I've got the power that'll come in, and then I'll bring in a power connection to that, uh, because that will also have to be connecting up to our D point. So I'll be bringing, basically bring D's filtered power to here, jump a part of that up to, I believe it's like, uh, anyway, it might drop in from underneath, actually, I can't remember, I'll have to look. Um, but, uh, or, or I may decide to try and put another actual eyelet here, I don't know, but I effectively need to have a connection from this guy to here for the uh, high voltage input for the for this preamp tube. I've got my tone stack filled out here. Uh, these are like, so this is the first gain stage, the, the JCM, or this is the plexi side. This is, it's got one half is the normal side and one half is the, uh, the bright side. And then we have the uh, JCM 800, that kind of section over here. And then, of course, this is the tone strike driver, which is a, uh, has a cathode follower as well to kind of give us some extra, you know, lack of, or what's the word? It's trying to kind of control the loss you get in this stage. So you still get some, but it reduces it. And then we come over here into the phase inverter. Um, then this is the bias circuit. I've, as you can see, I haven't populated the phase inverter yet or the bias circuit. So I will get to that. I'm just kind of running out of steam at this point, getting worn out. So uh, I'm, I've seen a lot of guys sign their boards, so I've decided to sign this one. Um, so people know it was me that built it, if anybody ever comes back later is wondering. Um, the So I'll be populating the phase inverter pretty soon here. I'm finishing up the last, so this is kind of the output section. And that connects into the bias. Now, right now, I have it set up, and I wasn't thinking about this before. I'm actually going to do a post-phase post, uh, post uh, phase inverter, PPIMV, master volume. It's called the Larmar style. So these two are supposed to be 220K resistors, but actually I'm going to take the outputs of these guys and send them off to the... They'll come from the actual... Uh, a, a dual ganged potentiometer, and I think I just have to take one feed from it. Doesn't matter really. It's this, these are unit potential, so I might just solder this end and then pull it from here, and pull that over to you know where that pot will be, uh, and that's where it'll control the, the master volume. And uh, then of course there's the bias, bias circuit. I had to do a couple things different here. I'll show you the picture above. This is actually interesting. Slucky caught this for me. Uh, you cannot do a direct um, full wave bridge rectifier jumper like I was thinking I could over to this one. And you'll see the schematic here above. Instead, you have to have a class X uh, 0 0.047 uh, cap right here between either side, it doesn't matter, but one of those two AC inputs into the uh, uh, the bias circuit. That kind of decouples it because you're not getting, uh, you don't have a center tap like you would have with a lot of the other ones, so you can't just pull a leg off directly. But this is, he's helped me figure that out. I basically had to set this one up. This is a 56K higher watt resistor that will handle the, this is just drop to ground, so it's just kind of an extra dropper to help drop some of the voltage a little bit. And then you've got your um, two capacitors. Uh, he told me to get, I, the ones I'd had were 10 microfarad at um, 100 volt. He said this couldn't, in theory, be higher than 100 volts, so that might cook them. So he said to be safe, get something higher. So these are 250s for now. I don't like the fact they're, they're kind of a no-name brand I got locally. They will work. They're you know way higher than they're needed, but I kind of want to first test and see what my voltages will be. Uh, if I'll set my my potentiometer to set max, detect max voltage, and I will turn it on and see what the max voltage is that it sees on power on before things have kind of charged up and started flowing. Uh, and if it's under, well under 100, then I'll probably be okay to replace those back with the originals that I had for this. But for now, those work. They're uh, 250 volt, uh, 10 microfarad capacitors. Uh, and then this is the last dropping stage, which I can't remember off the top of my head what that is, like maybe 24K or something, but that's what drops it down before jumping into here into the potential, but that allows you the adjustability. So there you have it. It's coming along. Uh, and of course, as usual on this build, uh, I've had several times I would solder something and forget I need to add another thing. So I get to go and uh, clean it out, resolder, it, reflow it. And I've not shown that with you guys this time because I've realized that's probably not the most exciting thing. But uh, so... Uh, Yep, so you can see, uh, also I'm using these, the, the only thing that was a, a bit tricky is Illinois, as far as their electrolytics, have a pretty poor reputation, but I, as far as I understand, uh, these regular uh, polyester style capacitors are just fine. I need these 0 .068 for the cathodes for several different of these on this amp. So uh, those I think are going to work fine. Uh, I do have some nice CDE, larger, nicer size mica capacitors for the uh, different spots. They have multiple places they call for these 470 microfarad, or 470 picofarad capacitors, as you can see. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's that's that. So we're looking, uh, getting coming along very well. Hopefully, just within the next week, I'll be able to finish this section, slap the board in, and get it all wired up, and have a finished amp for you guys to hear. So 
Uh, cheers, everybody. Thanks.